So in this video, I'm going to show you how to import invoice data from Mothernode into QuickBooks using Transaction Pro Importer. So as you can see, I already have my QuickBooks open and uh, I have my invoice down here and Transaction Pro Importer shortcut here. So let's just talk about all these things real, real quickly. Um, obviously, in order to get your uh, invoice data exported from Mothernode, you'll have to log into your Mothernode account like so. So in this example here is basically how you would pull that information from Mothernode. So go into your account, go into the invoice area, and whenever you're in invoices, up at the very top is going to be an export to accounting option. Give this a click, and then all of your exportable invoices will show up in a list. Select the ones that you want, and then click Export Selected. And then once that's done, it'll actually give you a file format like this, an XLS file, and that'll be what you use for the import. So let me go ahead and close my browser out because I don't need that. And this is the invoice data that I'm actually going to be importing today in the video. So I have three different companies here, four different lines of uh, uh, information. Um, so just keep... Uh, Keep note of this because uh, this will come up again in the process and we'll verify this as we're importing so let me go ahead and close that out and then the quickbooks obviously just to touch on that if you don't already use quickbooks quickbooks is a program that is used for accounting purposes and is put out by a, another third party uh, software developer called intuit and uh, so this isn't purchased through Mother No. This is a third-party application. And then Transaction Pro Importer is also a third-party application, and that is provided by a company called Bay State Consulting. So you'll need to purchase that through them. And uh, any sort of servicing or troubleshooting for any of these two uh, programs would have to be done through those particular program uh, or those companies. So just make sure that... Uh, if you have any troubleshooting ideas, you know, feel free to, to question, question us and let us know if you're having problems. And if we know what the problem is, we'll definitely let you know. But more likely than not, you won't have any issues. But if you do, we might send you over to Intuit or Bay State Consulting uh, for some help. But with that said, let's go ahead and move through this because it's pretty, uh, pretty simple and I doubt you'll have any issues. So let's go ahead and just uh, go through the process real quick and let's see how this works. So the Transaction Pro Importer, first, before I open this up, it is important to know that once this is installed on your machine, you're going to need to create a shortcut on your desktop. Now, it might create one out there automatically after you first install it. That's fine. Just find the shortcut. If you don't have one, create one. And then once the shortcut is there, right-click it and give a click on the properties and it's going to bring up a window that looks like this now by default i already have some extra stuff in here so let me clear this out real quick so by default it should look like something like this so when you first land on this particular target line um, it's going to point to the executable for Transaction Pro Importer. So it'll typically start off with the uh, hard drive that's uh, installed on. So in this case, it's my C drive. And then you go all the way through uh, the path, and it ends with the .exe. So the target path just points to where the executable is for the Transaction Pro Importer. So what we need to do to get this to work right with the uh, import is add a couple of adjustments to this target line. So at the very beginning, you're going to need to put in a double quote, just like that. And then once the double quote is there, go all the way over to the very end. And at the end of the .exe, put another double quote. And then after that final double quote, hit your space bar and then put a dash and then type in invoice credit memo. And as you can see, it's gonna be in all caps and no spaces. So once, once that's in there, you should be good to go. Click apply and then click okay. So now I can go ahead and open up Transaction Pro Importer. And once that's open, it should look something like this. 
Now, one thing to point out is the import type. As you can see, it says invoice credit memo. This is what I just put in at the end of the target path as, as uh, we discussed. Um, if you don't see this, most likely you messed up on that target path or you might be launching from a different shortcut. So just make sure that if you don't see this, you may have to go in and, and tweak that target line. There might be a problem or just double check to make sure you're running the right shortcut because you should see the in invoice credit memo. Uh, by default, that's not in here. There's a few other entries, so just be sure to look out for the credit uh, invoice credit memo. And then uh, I already have my file up here selected. So you would put your source file in here. This is the same file that I have down here. And other than that, I think we're good to go. Um, one thing to point out, there are some program options right here. Uh, some people might need to look through this and determine whether or not they need to enable or, or disable some of these options. But most of the time, you're good to go. You, you might not need to uh, even take a look at this. In my case, I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just keeping everything as the default. So let me go ahead and cancel out of that. So we're good to go there. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And I've already did this before, so it's just warning me that I've used this import file before, but that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now it's giving me a confirmation of what's being imported. And if you recall, when I showed you my Excel spreadsheet, it, this was the uh, information that was in here. So this information matches what you, what's in this uh, particular file down here. So that looks fine. Um, if there was a line or two that you wanted to delete, you could do that by selecting it and, and clicking the Delete Selected Rows button here. But I don't want to do that. I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and click Next. So this is the field mapping screen. Um, I've already mapped my, my uh, fields here. The best way to do it is to click the Field Match button, and it'll automatically populate this. So by default, it'll look like this when you first come in. Um, now, once you've set the field mappings, you won't need to do it again in the future. This is a one-time thing, and once the fields are mapped, it retains that. So next time you open up Transaction Pro Importer, it's, it's still going to be there. But in order to uh, make this work, just go ahead and hit this Field Match button. And as you can see, it's going to automatically populate just about every field here. Now, the ones that are in red are, are really important, and uh, the ones that aren't red or least important, but you'll probably still want to make sure that they're all mapped. Um, in this particular case, my transaction type did not map, as you can see. So what I need to do is figure out why. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to hit the down arrow and basically manually map it. And I can see right up right at the top, there's a transaction type. So I'll click that. And now we're good to go. So essentially what happened here is in QuickBooks, the field is called transaction type and then I slash C and in my import file it's just called transaction type so it wasn't an exact match so it didn't know that that was the field that I was looking for so in some cases as you can see you might need to go in and manually map that particular field so once that's done you should be good to go I'm, I'm good to go so I'm gonna hit the next button and this just gives you another confirmation of what's being imported and how the fields are being mapped I'm good to go there, so let's click Next. And then here is going to basically, these fields pertain to how the data is entered into QuickBooks based on what kind of uh, company or, or business you are. So I'm just going to select some nonsense since this is just a, uh, uh, an example. I'm not really doing anything here. Uh, this is, I'm just making a video. So I had that information put in there, but these might uh, be you know, this isn't going to be what you'll, you'll likely need to select. So just make sure that you pay some, some close attention to these particular fields and make sure that they uh, are selected appropriately for your business. All right, so I'm good to go there. I'm going to hit the Finish button. And at this point, it's given me a confirmation, just making sure that, you know, I'm sure that I want to import this information into QuickBooks. I definitely do. So let's go ahead and click OK. And then once that's uh, importing, you'll see down here on the bottom left, it says processing and it'll count each row or each line of data that it needs to do. So I had four lines of data, so it's gone through all four of them already and we're good to go. So it says invoice credit memos imported into QuickBooks. 
I'll click OK. And again, it gives me another confirmation screen. This is essentially just the uh, log. So it tells me what was imported. If I wanted to save this uh, import log, I could do that by clicking the Save button. Um, but I don't need to do that. So I'll go ahead and close out. And I'll close out of the Transaction Pro importer because I do not need that any longer. And now I'm looking at my QuickBooks. So if I come into QuickBooks and I pull up my customers, I'll now see those three customers that I had in my invoices. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing to mention, if the if you already have been using QuickBooks and you have a lot of information and customer customer names and company names that are in there, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, in a lot of cases, customers will circle back around and might purchase more, more items or services through you. And if that's the case, if you're pulling invoices out of Mothernode for companies that are already in your QuickBooks, you're going to need to make sure that the company name matches exactly uh, in mother node as it is in QuickBooks. If there's any sort of differences there, if you try to import, you know, a company with a slight different name or maybe an extra space, for example, it's not going to know that those companies match and you'll end up with uh, two different entries for the same company because of the name difference. So just make sure that that, uh, that that's pretty good to go. And, and other than that, everything should be straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to mother node. Thanks for watching.